Hello there guys, welcome back to another C Sharp tutorial. In the previous video we talked about using text boxes. Uh, we didn't cover much of that, just a few properties like getting text and displaying text and multi-line. Uh, today we're gonna try to do a simple calculator uh, using text boxes. So first we're gonna use uh, Windows Forms applications. Go here, this is Windows Forms application. I'll leave the name as, uh, as it is and give it an OK. Okay, and we will get the form like this. Uh, I'm gonna change the text property of the form. <coughs> That's gonna be our uh, calculator. And probably I'm gonna change this to C sharp calculator. Enter. And there we go, we have it like that. This is nice. And uh, what we want to do is, uh, well, and they, I think one uh, about. Uh, a few tutorials ago we tried to make a little calculator but we didn't have the means to display values so we used buttons uh, as a way to display the number and instead today we are going to use a text box so we are going to go and uh, put a text box here there we go uh, I'm going to make it white like this and uh, I want to make it multi-line uh, and this one I'm going to change its name to uh, LED for the lead of the you know or calculator uh, and we are going to add a button here okay there's going to be what uh, there's going to be zero I press control drag and drop one two three okay so we have four values eight and a little bit more there we go so I have all these buttons. Uh, I'll make this a little bit shorter. There we go. And reduce the size of this one. Okay. Uh, this should be zero. Let me bring the properties window right away. Okay. This is a properties window, so I'll go to the text property. And this is gonna be zero. This is gonna be one. This is gonna be two. This is gonna be three. And four and five and six and seven eight nine then it's gonna be clear and this one I'm gonna delete it for now. Maybe later on we will uh well you know what actually I'm gonna make this a plus and another one will be equal so we will add only numbers here okay it's as simple as that let me save this good and next we want to add an event for any one of those buttons so that we can add text here so I will press shift and uh, you know if you remember the code from two tutorials ago I was able to add uh, you know display the events only I was able to write a single handler for all of these uh, buttons so I would go to the click event I'm gonna say number clicked hit enter and we have the event right away so this is number clicked so I will define a button btn equals sender I'll cast it to button and then I will write sender. So uh, the type of this one will be changed from object to button. Actually, <coughs> it is a still, I'm sorry, it is a still a button, but uh, it doesn't know its type. So here we are casting it and put it, uh, making this pointer point to it. Next, uh, what should we do? I'm going to say a string msg or let's say nmbr equal. Uh, which is displayed in the LED dot text, and I will add to that uh, PTN dot text, and finally we will display the values back. So LED dot text equal NMBR, and we want to test. So we will run this here. Now there's an error. Oh, uh, the AND works on VB plus here. Sorry about that. 
so I have 0, 1, 2, 3, blah, blah, blah. So it is working fine, no problem there, right? Okay, so let me close this part. This part worked. Oh, forgot to show you something here. If we run this and we write these values, I can actually select some stuff, replace it with text, and do something here, right? But we don't want that to happen. We want the user to enter numbers only. So we want this one to uh, to be functional but not editable. So there's a property here which is called read only. So where is that? Read only. Wait a second. Oh, sorry. This is, uh, I was wondering where that is. We are displaying even not, not property, so select properties and we will find it right away. This is the read only. I was wondering where that went. Anyway, so when we do it like that, you know, its its color is changed to be the same as the form. I want it to be distinguishable. Uh, so here I'm gonna change its back color to something like this. So it's white. Now we're gonna run this. And we will write values. Now I'm gonna I'm pressing things and nothing happened because this one's read only. I can copy from it right away, but I uh, cannot do anything else. So we put this one here, no problem. Uh, also, it's kind of small, so I want to change the font. So I'm gonna change the font of every control on the font. So I'm gonna select these all, and there's a property called font. It's common for all of them. So I'm going to use courier menu, this one, I'm going to make it bold, I'm going to make it 16, and I'm going to hit OK. So this one get a little bit bigger, move them downwards a little bit, there we go, this one is fine. Okay, so let's have a look, and we have big numbers, no problem. So one of the problems we have is that, well, you have this, these leading zeros, you don't want to, them to be displayed, okay? So what should we do here? Well, uh, it's kind of easy. Well, one way that we could, you know, uh, uh, we could solve this issue is by, well, converting this into a number, sorry. So here, we are gonna say, uh, double d equal double dot parse. Okay, this is a very a very cheap way to do it, but then I am gonna say double dot to string. So what I did here, I converted this number into double from string into double, and basically when get represented as a number. There are no leading zeros, and then I will convert this back. So I'm gonna run this, and you know I'm writing this. I'm putting zeros, but you you know I I think you have just noticed that how many times I am pressing zeros, nothing happens unless I write a number and the zero is meaningful. At that point, I can do some stuff here. Okay. So now, what should we do? What what should happen when we pl uh, press like the plus sign? Well, the calculator should display zero and remember what was the previous value. So I'm gonna say, let me see here. I'm gonna put a variable here, which is kind of public here for the form, in order to, uh, for it to remember. So I'm gonna say public double last value equals zero. So the last value we want to operate on is zero. Okay. So here when we press the plus sign, uh, we will do some work on that. So let me go here. Let's go to the plus sign. So I will get the last value and do something. Uh, and also I have to know the current value that's being displayed in the LED. So I'm going to say uh, double current value equals double dot parse. This is going to be LED dot 
dot text. Wonderful, right? And we got this value and put it here. And then I'm going to say last value equals last value or plus current value. Okay. So we have just, you know, uh, uh, sorry. Why am I doing this here? Oh, sorry. The last value. So about that. Um, double dot parse. Led dot text. Sorry about that. Okay. So whenever I plus, uh, press the plus button, the last value should be what? The last value should be, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> updated, and the current value, uh, which is displayed in the led, will be cleared. Okay. And by the way. The LED should always display zero at the very beginning, so this one should be having a zero. Okay, and finally, when I press the equal sign, uh, a plus operation should happen. So I'm going to say double current value equal double dot parse, and that should be what should be uh, LED dot text. So I'm getting what is displaying the text box and put in the current value and now I'm gonna add things. So current value equals last or maybe I'm gonna use another variable so that you don't get confused. Final result equal current value plus last value. There we go. So we add these together and uh, we should display the result in the LED. So LED dot text equal Final result dot to string. So we change this here, and also last value. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we don't need to do anything else. That's it. So let us run this code now, and I'm gonna say ten plus thirty equals forty. Okay, so it kind of remember what what happened here, right? Okay, so now what if we want to add uh, more operations? So we're going to add the subtraction, multiplication, uh, and division, and other stuff. So here, this is going to be a big button. There's going to be what? It's going to be minus sign. This is a minus sign. Sorry. Okay. And uh, I'm going to add a multiplication. This is multiplication. Uh, let me check something here. Okay. And wait a second. What did I do here? Oh, I think I think I added an event handler for this one. Okay, when you drag and uh, you drag a control, you, uh, when you press control key and uh, click on a control and drag it, uh, the event handler will, will be uh, for the copy will be the same as the original. So just be sure not to do this kind of mistake. This is what I did here. So here, okay. So now let me go here. I'm going to repeat the code for these. Why? Well, because uh, each button have a different operation. So here, uh, actually, last value uh, equal uh, double dot parse is going to be led dot text. Okay, and then I have to remember the last or the operation I need to do. So I'm going to say public int operation equals zero. So uh, here I'm going to do something. I'm going to say operation equals one. So one will stand for addition. Okay, it's, or something like that. Uh, let's go for this one here. 
And I'm gonna make this. Oh, sorry, forgot to do something here. LED dot text equals an, M, uh, an empty number. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this. This will be subtraction. Two will be for subtraction, and this one's gonna be for multiplication. So I'm copying this one and changing the code for multiplication. And now, whenever I press the equal sign, this is an equal sign. Uh, I'm going to change the result. So here, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say if operation equals 1, then, okay, so this is for addition, else, this is going to be for subtraction. Uh, well, this one need to be reversed because we are subtracting the current value from the last one. Uh, if operation equals two, there we go. Else, if operation equals what? Equals three. So there's going to be a multiplication. Control C, Control V. We're going to multiply these together. Okay. It's very simple, very straightforward. Okay. Uh, let me remove this, this method. Nothing's calling it. I'm going to save things here and I'm going to run this code. Let's see. So let's say 10 minus 2 equals 8. Right. And uh, if I say 10, oops. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to change the behavior a little bit. So let me run this again. I'm going to say 10 multiplied by 2 equals 20. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So wait a second. Let me see what did happen here. So I'm going to say 10 minus. 2 equal 8 multiply by 2 equals 16 minus 7 should equal 9 a plus 1 should equal 10 so it is working fine no problem there yeah uh, well uh, the point of this uh, exercise was just showing you how you can do Calculator quickly using only buttons and uh, text box and also I wanted you to investigate that we can change the font uh, Maybe I did that a little bit uh, quickly, but basically you select the control There is a property called the font and this is what I used in here. Let me hide the, pr the events and uh, display the properties Okay, there's uh, where's the font? There we go. So this is the font property. But I also changed the back color. Same I did for the controls. The only difference is that uh, when I did this, uh, I selected all the controls by just clicking and uh, selecting all these, and then I went to the properties window. Uh, when you select more than one control, the properties window will display the properties that are common to all these controls, including. Uh, the font, the color, the four color, or something like that. Okay, I can even change everything here on the form. I'm going to change this just for the tests and uh, just showing you this. I'm going to choose this color, Ooh, hideous, right? So, this this way, I change everything quickly. Uh, Control Z to make things go back to normal. So, uh, I think this is enough for today about using text boxes. In the next vid video, we're going to talk about labels. Not much about them. Their purpose is very simple, just displaying text. But we will also see what we can do with them. Okay, and uh, uh, maybe we'll do a simple text editor or something like that. And uh, hopefully, after that, we will get into group boxes. Okay, uh, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye bye.